Hey everybody, it's Harry from Set Up Your Daddy Barbecue, the YouTube channel that teaches you how to master barbecue so you can spread barbecue love. Today, I am actually going to be doing a YouTube subscriber experiment. Jason Miller, he has a really special way of cooking brisket. Uh, at an actual contest, he finished cooking a crawfish boil for his family and then he decided to take his uh, competition brisket and throw it into the crawfish boil liquid for about 30 minutes. And uh, he cooked up that brisket and he tells me that out of 70 teams, he finished second overall in brisket. So that is a phenomenal story and I always like to try something new because I'm always learning about brisket. So in today's episode, we're going to pay homage to Jason Miller's recipe. We're going to take this 15 pound brisket. We're going to go ahead and cook it exactly the way he sent me instructions on. We're going to put it in a crawfish boil for about 30 minutes get it nice and flavorful and then we're gonna season it up and cook it like a regular brisket and see the results in this crazy crawfish boil brisket episode I have my crab boil ready and uh, I have uh, a few ingredients in here. I'm gonna run you through it. I think I, I have about nine ingredients here. I have uh, two packages of uh, crawfish boil. I use uh, Zotarians. There's about a quarter cup of chili oil in here. A couple of hits of garlic. I put one onion in here. I got some lemons and oranges from my front yard in here. Uh, some bay leaf, some uh, chili flakes, and then lots and lots of cayenne. I also added salt and pepper to taste. So you've got to taste it, make sure that it's salty enough. You want it to be about uh, twice the taste of the ocean, which is going to be pretty salty. Okay, that's about right. We're gonna get the brisket ready, let it dip in here, have a nice uh, soak for about half an hour. Mortar pestle is designed to weigh the brisket down. brisket in the crawfish boil liquid for about 30 minutes now and I'm going to go ahead and move it into the pan so that we can season it smoke it. Brisket is steaming hot and I'm going to apply my uh, First Place USA Slap It Daddy rub on it. We're going to smoke it until it's uh, perfect. And I'm going to apply the rub as if the uh, brisket was raw. Hopefully soaked up some of that crawfish flavor. This brisket is wet so it's going to be able to kind of get, get the rub to stick. I don't need any more smears to put on it. I'm going to put on the same amount of rub that I would if this was a raw brisket. See what happens here. I of course have second doubts as to what I'm doing, but you know, I gotta keep an open mind. Jason Miller said he worked for him, so I'm willing to go the extra mile and follow Jason's recommendation. I season the bottom part here. I'm burning my hands, this is piping hot. Right, let's go put it on a pit. Cook it until it's perfect, see what happens. This uh, crazy crawfish boil brisket episode.
taken about nine hours and the brisket has crusted up. The way I can tell is when you touch it, the crust has formed and you can use gently scratch it with the scratch test. You find that the crust will not fall off or the rub will not fall off. That means that the mallard reaction is complete. Right now, I'm going to rehydrate the brisket before we wrap it in foil to cook it so that the connective tissue is to be rendered. So you're going to drizzle about 10 ounces of beef broth on it. And as you put it down, you can see that it will absorb like a sponge. That's pretty normal. This is a step to rehydrate your brisket. And it's a good competition trick that we use to do well in brisket contests. See, it's soaking in like a sponge. You do this all over. You gently spread about 10 ounces. Now at this point in time, if your rub falls off, then you made a mistake of not waiting long enough for the crust to set. As you have seen in my 200 plus videos, I never cook with time and temperature. I always cook until the crust sets and uh, that way you get a perfect result every time because we depend on your pit conditions, the ambient temperature, humidity, your draft, the fuel, the kind of wood you use, all is going to be different. So if you follow my method of just cooking with a feel, cooking using signs and cooking using visual cues, you'll be much more successful. For those of you paying attention, you'll notice that I put the uh, brisket in a little foil boat so that it doesn't leak the liquid out. That way I don't have to worry about it kind of dripping all over my countertop with a little foil, little foil boat right here. So that's another tip for you guys to try it at home. We're going to put it into a 250 degree oven now because uh, BTU is BTU is BTU. If you want, you can put this back in the pit, but that just will burn more fuel and uh, create more work for you. So it's shortcut method. Once you reach this stage, it's covered in foil. It's not going to absorb any more smoke. So we'll just keep it in the oven. Have a shower, relax. Watch your favorite ball game. Our crawfish brisket is done. And uh, let's give it a taste test and see how it looks. Looks pretty normal. Pretty decent smoke ring. Not super duper, but not bad. Yep, not as deep as I would like, but kind of okay. Put it in the cubes now. Take one. Okay, we are here to share the conclusions now. So, I've eaten my way to two, two rounds of tasting and I can give you kind of my impression. From an appearance standpoint, the appearance is my opinion. It's not as good as if I cook it a conventional way. And the smoke ring is okay, but, but not terribly great. And you can see here, uh, the smoke ring is kind of muted. And, and I think I know the reason why. When you boil or you poach, or you kind of simmer the brisket, what, what's happening is I think the heat tends to cauterize the pores. So after you cook it for about 30 minutes, the top layer, maybe about a quarter inch, has already been cooked. And it's very hard for then the meat that is already cooked to absorb smoke because the pores are closed. So that's my, my first impression. And uh, my hunch is borne out by the depth of the smoke ring. Uh, it's not bad but probably maybe 60% of what I can do in a conventional raw brisket method. So that's the appearance. Crust, uh, it's about the same. Uh, the crust was able to form uh, a nice dark crust. So the crust is, a, is kind of a tie between a crawfish boiled brisket and a regular cooked brisket. When you move on to the taste, uh, taste has a hint of crawfish boil. Now, of course, that's... <laughs> Harry, tell me something new. That is obviously understandable. Uh, the flavor of crawfish boil, in this case, the spice from the Zatarian uh, crawfish boil packet, is kind of coming through. So I get a little hint of the Zatarian, which I think kind of like overpowers my uh, moolah beef rub, <laughs> which uh, kind of goes to show that the crab boil spices were a lot stronger than my moolah rub. So, so the nuance of my moolah rub, uh, first place USA rub, didn't come through. It's kind of overpowered by the vegetarian. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Some people like that kind of a flavor. 
uh, it's it just my brain needs a little bit of uh, kind of readjustment, figuring out that I'm tasting a brisket, but the brisket tastes a faintly like a crawfish ball. So I, I think that's kind of a tie. I, I may not care for that, but you know, you may like a brisket that has a kind of a crawfish boil spiciness uh, and flavor to it. So, so I think taste wise, I, I think it's, it's kind of a, a, you know, I like my brisket better, honestly. Vegetarian, I don't think I, I care for a, a crawfish flavor on my brisket, but hey, you know, that's just me. You may like it. I don't know. Uh, in terms of tenderness, uh, the tenderness is a little bit unusual. Uh, I think I overcooked it probably about another 30 minutes. I was busy doing something. So the tenderness was a little bit falling off the kind of too too much. Uh, it was too tender. It's falling, falling apart. Uh, but I, I don't think the boiling did a lot to the tenderness. So primarily the boiling did a lot to impact the, uh, the smoke ring and then impact the flavor. So uh, is this a pass? Uh, no, I, I don't think that boiling your brisket in a crawfish boil, it's a great idea, don't get me wrong. Jason Miller, thank you for the suggestion. And you know me, right? I'm fierce, I'm like an MMA fighter. I will try everything. I will stand up that side down uh, and, and cook brisket if I think it'll make a better brisket. My short conclusion, it's, it's a fail. And uh, for those of you who have watched me for, for uh, the entire episode, sorry to waste your time, but uh, crawfish boil brisket, not a good idea, in my opinion. You can do better with just a raw brisket. So Jason Miller, I, I tried your recipe. Uh, I hope I follow your instructions correctly. Didn't turn out the way uh, I wanted and it was not as good as my raw brisket. So, so there you have it. So uh, with that, uh, I got to now turn it over to my master judge, which is Beans, Mr. Beans. So Mr. Beans will have to have a taste and let us know what he thinks. All right, Mr. Beans, I, uh, I'm giving you a piece of the flat and a piece of the point, and you tell me if you like the crawfish brisket. Go ahead. It's good brisket, don't get me wrong. So there's nothing wrong with the brisket. It's just that, uh, you know, it's a uh, slightly unusual flavor and uh, appearance uh, not so good as a regular brisket. So, but overall, you know, still an enjoyable brisket as you can tell from uh, his reaction here. Thanks for staying patiently with me throughout this episode. So the final conclusion, it's a fail, but that will not stop me from keeping trying new recipes from my viewers. When you have ideas out there, let me know and I will try them out no matter how outlandish. Uh, if you like this type of video, let me know in the description below. If you don't like this kind of video where it's a fail, let me know also in the description below. Sometimes in life, you never know until you try and you know me, I am a fearless uh, cook. And there's anything that's out there that can be done, I will try it. So thanks for stopping by. Please like, subscribe, and share. We'll see you guys in the next video.